Hi everyone, uh, welcome to uh, another table talk. So I just kind of wanted to do a bit of an update, um, you know, on my uh, discussing my journey with my first uh, tail mount uh, uh, park jet, this uh, FRC Foamies uh, F18. Since I shot my last uh, video where I discussed uh, a lot of the details and challenges that I had uh, during my build, uh, I've accumulated well over a hundred more flights. So I, you know, I feel like I've got quite a bit of uh, Quite a bit of stick time under my uh, under my belt, so to speak, with this uh, with this plane. So, uh, anyways, these are just uh, you know I'm not uh, I'm not bashing in any way the design or tail mount park jets or anything like that. Uh, I actually absolutely love this plane. I love how it looks. I love how it flies. Uh, you know, and I'll continue uh, flying the wings off it. Um, some of it, you know, they're just things that I might do a little bit differently uh, on my next build um, you know and this I probably will build at some point another uh, F FRC Foamies F-18 uh, Canada has just uh, I've just discovered recently Canada will be keeping the F-18 around until 2032 so uh, be a lot of real F-18s flying in Canadian skies so I might as well add mine to the mix um, anyway uh, just so I'm just gonna I did make a few notes here so, uh, so that I didn't uh, forget anything um, and some of these are lessons that uh, you know I've been in discussion with a couple of people who are building or are thinking of building uh, you know a tail mount uh, park jet so uh, you know hopefully this will uh, give you uh, some thoughts uh, things to think about if you are planning on on uh, building one <clears throat> um, and I as I've mentioned in other videos uh, later, at some point in this year, I will be building another tail mount uh, park jet, uh, the FRC Foamies F-22 Raptor. Okay, so a couple of things that I would do a little bit differently, and again, these are these are just minor things, and you know, probably just personal preference more than anything else. But you know, I think that they would help a little bit. So I would probably starting at the front here, I would probably do a better job of uh, sanding and uh, filling here, you know, just to uh, just to make it a little bit sleeker. Uh, I did do an initial sanding, but uh, or uh, sanding on it, but I didn't do any sort of filling of the cracks. Uh, that wouldn't add uh, too too much weight. Uh, I'd probably just use like a lightweight spackle, uh, which I've used on many other park jets, just to keep this, you know, make this as nice and sleek uh, as possible. Keep the air as clean as possible. And the other thing is, you know, when I think realizing now, you know, I've taken the time to build uh, such a nice looking scale uh, plane, scale looking plane that you know I might as well take the extra time and, and smooth it out for both uh, form and function. Um, a couple of other things, uh, and it's going to be hard for you to see, but on the, uh, uh, let me get something here to use as a pointer, um, the horizontal stabilizers, uh, the back part of the horizontal stabilizer is, is uh, right here, and that extends uh, forward, and as, as uh, you know, these horizontal stabilizers are on the outside, and it continues across. So what I would do uh, uh, probably the next time is I would uh, taper the leading and trailing edges of those and as well the bottom of these um, uh, vertical stabilizers they have a tab that goes down and then, and then slots into that uh, piece of horizontal stabilizer. I would also probably taper those front and back. I know that's very very minor but you know even if it buys me uh, a couple of percents more efficiency and maybe a bit more speed you know it's very little work for uh, for some sort of improvement. So I would probably do that. Uh, the other thing is, uh, and I know it's going to be hard for you to see here, I didn't do a terribly good job um, of sort of tying down my my motor wires. So they're not, you know, I've, touch, touch wood, they're not in any danger of coming out and getting caught in my prop. But, uh, you know, they're just kind of sitting there uh, in the airflow. Uh, especially since I've gone to, you know, experimenting with these 5 inch uh, props. One of the reasons I think that that's important is I think a lot of the, oops, sorry, I'm going to poke you in the eye with my plane. Uh, a lot of the airflow that's getting to the prop is going through these, uh, these intakes and out, then out through the back, you know, if you can see uh, there. So, you know, if I can do something to keep that a little cleaner internally, I will. So, uh, you know, I'll be looking uh, when I build my FRC Foamies F-22 Raptor, that's definitely something that, um, that I'll be looking at. And again, Minor, minor details, but uh, you know every little bit uh, helps. And I've found uh, 
you know, taking the time to do the extra bit of sanding and filling uh, really can help the plane uh, be more efficient and, uh, you know, a little, little faster in the air. Um, okay, so uh, the setup. Uh, I've been pretty lucky, you know, with the, with the power setup that I chose to use. Uh, you know, and since I've been experimenting with these uh, five-ish inch uh, uh, tri-blade uh, quad props, uh, you know, fairly high uh, pitch. Um, I've I've found, you know, fortunately this motor that I chose uh, can still spin these uh, pretty efficiently. Now, mostly on 3S, uh, I think the motor is working. Uh, just can't quite maximize, optimize the uh, the um, uh, performance of the prop because it has such a high pitch. You know, when you're trying to spin it at such a high RPM. Um, you know, so it's it's fun to drop a 4S battery into it every once in a while just for that extra bit of speed and the cool sound, but uh, you know, 99% of the time I'm going to be flying this on 3S and, and these these 5-inch uh, 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 quad props, you know, higher, higher pitch uh, seem to be working really, really well. Uh, I have more of them coming to experiment with uh, that are around the same size. This is the Gemfan Hurricane. Uh, 51499 uh, prop, which uh, so far has sort of become my favorite uh, the, of all the park jets I've been running on. Uh, just seems to have really good, uh, much better, or not much better, but uh, noticeably better performance in that sort of 50 to 75 uh, percent throttle range. So I have other uh, three blade props coming that I will be experimenting and, you know, trying to find that elusive perfect combination. But hey, it's, it's fun to experiment uh, and uh, not that I need an excuse, but it, uh, you know, I get to get out and fly this plane even more. Um, so I guess, you know, if you're looking at that, um, you know, I think if you can, <coughs> the three blade prop compared to the two blade, six inch two blade, uh, definitely has uh, softened slash reduced the amount of torque roll uh, on launch uh, that I was noticing with the six inch props. Uh, the, you know, there's torque roll is still there because, you know, when you first toss the plane, you know, the few miles an hour that the plane's going after it leaves your hand, that's the only airflow that's going over the, uh, the, the wing and the control surfaces sort of for that first couple of seconds until the plane gets a chance to accelerate. So there still is uh, a certain amount of torque roll, but with this three blade uh, prop, the torque roll is much softer, more gradual, and, you know, gives me a couple of extra... Uh, nanoseconds to recover, get the wings level, and, and fly it away. Uh, the other thing is that I haven't noticed any problems with uh, torque roll at all in, uh, you know, when I'm hammering the throttle on full, full speed runs. Now, I fully admit that I probably, uh, you know, to a certain extent self, uh, self-induce some of that issue because I, you know, I did downsize this plane considerably. Uh, I'm just under a 27 inch wingspan where the scale wingspan is 30 inches. So you may not have that same uh, problem, uh, but on the other side of the coin, depending on what uh, power setup uh, you choose, uh, you're going to have you know uh, more drag because you've got a longer uh, wingspan. So it's like it, so many things aerodynamically, that's uh, it's a bit of a trade-off. But I've been very very uh, happy with this uh, these five-inch three-bladed props, and again I'll continue to experiment with more of those on 3S as they come along. Um, okay, controls, uh, I definitely uh, am a big fan, I think, and I've mentioned this in other my other video and maybe other videos, excuse me. Uh, I'm a big fan of having all the controls, you know, uh, elevons, ailerons, and rudders uh, on, this, on this airplane. Uh, I don't, I, I personally wouldn't fly a tail mount park jet without all the controls, but again, that's uh, just me. I'm especially uh, happy to have uh, rudders because one of the things that I've been noticing, and I'll just I'll just use Bentley's uh, my dog's uh, little MIG here to kind of de demonstrate a little easier. Uh, one of the things that I notice with this plane, uh, the F-18, more than some of my uh, prop and slot planes, is you know if I'm flying along and I've got let's you know let's say I've got a tailwind or, you know, a quartering uh, tail slash crosswind, as I, as I turn, what, what happens is I get to a certain point where, uh, you know, the, the, uh, you know, the plane is automatically, 
uh, going to slow down a little bit unless I'm competing in the power. So what I'm noticing is that um, the the with you know with the wind at the tail is sometimes those control surfaces aren't quite as effective. And what I find when when I'm doing that you know tail or quartering crosswind is the as I start to turn the plane, the tail will drop or the nose will rise. So you know just feeding in a little bit of rudder and it's really really helpful to you know to get that plane uh, keep keep the turn you know nice and level all the way around. So I'm really uh, yeah, I'm really, really, really a big fan of, uh, of the rudders. Um, you know, they're very, very effective. It doesn't take a whole lot of deflection, but it helps to keep that, uh, you know, helps to keep that turn nice and flat rather than, you know, you enter the turn and your nose is up like this and then you're, you know, you're cranking. Sometimes if you don't have rudders, you're cranking harder and then the next thing you, you over roll or you pull too hard and then you sort of snap around the turn. So just keeping the, the, the Pitch and roll inputs and feeding in a little bit of yaw input I found has uh, been really, really uh, helpful in uh, flying uh, this plane. So, anyway, so there's uh, you know there's there's kind of a little bit of an update. I know it's uh, it's pretty minor, um, but uh, you know those are some things that I would uh, that I would do differently. Um, if you uh, you know we're going to build it full full size. Uh, there are some six inch uh, three blade props. The Master Air Screw six by four by three. Uh, prop. Uh, I've run that a lot on uh, uh, motors between 22 and 2600 kV. Uh, beyond that, it's not uh, uh, the it, you it rapidly reach a point of diminishing returns where you're you know if, say you've tried to run it on a 2700 kV or higher. Um, your your increase in power is very minimal, but your the amount of amp draw jumps. Uh, considerably. So anyway, if you want to discuss uh, some thoughts, if you're building one of these or you want to discuss some thoughts on, uh, on those, uh, please, you know, please leave a comment down below. Uh, I'll also leave my, a link to my, um, my uh, test, uh, motor, motor test spreadsheet. I did, I think, test the uh, Multistar Viking 2208 2600 KV. I bench tested it with the 6x4 uh, master air screw 6x4x3 prop, the results are pretty good, so uh, I might actually get out and uh, field test that. But yeah, please please don't hesitate, have a look at that spreadsheet, or if you're not sure, uh, you know, leave a question in the comments down below. So uh, anyway, this is a bit off, but uh, off the topic, but I'm, uh, I'm excited like a kid at Christmas time here. I've been waiting for this Brother Hobby uh, Speed Shield uh, 2207.5 3400 uh, kV motor that I, I found through Engineer X's uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I'm thinking if the testing goes well, which I'm hoping to start in the next couple of days, that this, uh, this little bad boy might find its home on my uh, uh, FRC Foamies F22 Raptor. Give me some real, uh, hopefully give me some really good speed on, uh, on uh, 3S, maybe even 4S. Uh, anyway, I'll have a link to uh, Engineer X's uh, YouTube channel and specifically the video about that motor. Um, that might be a you know an option again if you're looking for some uh, super peppy uh, speed. So uh, thanks thanks very much for watching. Again, please uh, please check out the uh, video description down below for links to the other video that I did on this uh, FRC Foamies uh, FA18 Hornet where you can get the plans uh, that sort of stuff. Uh, thank thanks for watching. Blue skies, calm winds to everyone. Park jet noise. You know the sound of freedom, baby. Take care.